It's incredibly important that people don't kind of lose the financial aid that is needed and support. I usually cover some element of my face when I perform. I do a lot of panels, I'll tend to wear a hat, just simple things. And for me, it's part of my artistic decision that I choose not to show my full face. And there's also an element of comfort, not, not purposefully, or even if someone hasn't realized it, as a white person, you will have benefited from the way that this society has been built. Anyone to say that every single person in society has equal access to something is a person who has never experienced inequality and has no idea of the difficulties that non-white people do face. I use they them pronouns. I'm an artist, DJ, producer and activist. I'm the founder of Flesh Intention, which is a techno fetish party based in Leeds, brought by trans, non-binary and queer people of colour. And I'm also the father of House of Flavour, which is a queer, trans, intersex people of colour vote house based in Leeds. Um, I think in the last six months, um, it has been a really huge struggle as it has for so many people as a artist um, who was predominantly uh, making most of my finances from DJing and touring um, and my work in event space starts I kind of lost I'd say about 95% of it which is it's been a real struggle for the entire community and I think especially for the queer community my understanding of my queer community and the community that I felt safest with is a very small, tight-knit kind of group in Leeds, um, a group of events, a group of places, a group of spaces. And I think losing that has been incredibly difficult for so many people because it's losing kind of a bit of a sense of um, purpose and family as well. Yeah, it's been a real difficult time on like a really fundamental level of needing to pay the bills. That was um, a nightmare. <laughs> and then on a mental and emotional level, it was really difficult because I'm so used to kind of planning a lot of my life around all of these people I care for and occupy space for them. And when that's taken away, it's, um, yeah, it's incredibly hard to kind of find a way to move forward and make sense of yourself. So I think on a personal level, there was a lot of re-evaluating and re-understanding my own kind of mind and my own kind of sense of purpose as well. I think personally, I didn't actually access many LGBTQIA specific services. Uh, in Leeds, where I'm from, there's a real kind of there's a huge pop scene that is really growing quickly, but it was also just at this state, set stage of kind of um, momentum. And unfortunately, COVID-19 kind of stopped in the yeah. track. I'm a lot of part of some really beautiful kind of art groups and um, digital workshops that were this. So with House of Flavor, we did a really gorgeous residency uh, back in August, and that was with new members of the house and that was about occupying space together as a gender non-conforming trans and non-binary first house of majority of the black and brown people. Two of the things that I did through quarantine and I'm still doing are much more about creating art together as queer people which is what my personal level of feeling queer and comfortable and expression that's where I am. But I know for a lot of people you need to be able to access things related is really important because I was able to access a gender, um, gender swap and gc 2 b scheme, which was a hugely important thing because I was also um, trying to work out my own transition in place. And while in quarantine, we kind of we have to press pause on a lot. 
So I think it's really important that these groups who can provide really specific things for the queer community and especially for the most marginalised queer people, so the disabled queer people um, and the cute pop queer people and these the most marginalised community is incredibly important that they're able to receive really specific care. I, I found like the biggest concern for myself was a real struggle to adapt especially mentally, to a huge, huge change in what I was used to, what my normality was completely changed. And it was a normality for a lot of people. So I think for me, um, I'm now in a place where I feel proud that I think I've got a lot more self-awareness of my own mental health needs and well-being. Um, but that was a huge, huge struggle and it's still a journey that I'm working out. A lot of people, especially trans people, are having to kind of quarantine or be in situations which aren't safe or they're having to be fully cognitive. So I think it's really important that there is care um, in some form for these people. Um, I, I also carry a lot of privilege in the fact that I am half um, British and I live here, um, so it gives me a lot of... I'm able to be free when I'm here, it's brilliant. I can go to the most wonderful spaces and be free and free as a queer kind of trans person. Like at the moment there is so much, there is a lot of momentum, rightfully so, and there should have been decades ago for the equal rights and dis uh, black folk and the dismantling of white supremacy, which just is part of pretty much every single thing that we access in society. Um, and I think it's incredibly important that any kind of, anyone who's in a position of power as a non-black person needs to make sure that they everything within their power to support and uplift and amplify the people at the very forefront of making this change and there are so many incredible kind of like black artists and queer creatives at the moment who are doing some really beautiful things i think it's yeah it's just so important this is this, this, this it should be at the forefront of every conversation happening now for every single person who is looking to fund something it needs to be in that conversation because without kind of equal rights and the rights of um, black folks put at the forefront, then there's not going to be any equal rights for any person of colour and that's the way that I see that and I think it's incredibly important to try and remember that. Because everything is catered and created um, towards white folks in society, it's so much easier to reap the benefits as a white person and I think that goes right back to the very beginning of when we're looking to like and well, if someone's funding that isn't as good, then are not good enough. That's a, that's that's a for me. It's kind of an, it's a simplification of a huge kind of issue, um, which stems right back down to kind of like primary school when we're looking at the kind of disadvantages of non-white folks and predominantly black folks. So I think for anyone to say that. Every single person in society has equal access to something, is a person who has never experienced inequality and has no idea of the difficulties that non-white people do face. And it's also a huge oversimplification of a very important issue, which is that our society has been built and created for the benefit of white folks. Um, and it has, um, even if, not, not purposefully or even if someone hasn't realised it, as a white person you will have benefited from the way that this society has been built. So for things like um, funding applications that goes into education, it all it's all a huge kind of, I won't talk about it at all and it's not something that I know near enough about, but it goes into education and how Look in primary school and high schools, how from the very beginning, non-white people and especially black folks are um, given fairness and a kind of set up to have to try so much harder throughout life. So when we're looking at applications for funding bodies, um, there have been some really, I don't know off the top of my head, but there have been some incredible things written about how the actual language used is colonialist and how it's really difficult as non-black and um, non-white people to sometimes face this language and to have to go through these hoops that are asked of us.
what Pride has meant to me has developed hugely in the last few years. And I think at the moment, it means family. I feel like I've found a really beautiful family that I've kind of chosen. And that's what Pride means to me. Like I love and I'm so proud of every single person. And I've also managed to make some queer family in Malaysia. So I think that's what Pride means to me right now. I just, my first thought is family. I think um, the future, I can't, I find it really hard to think of the future right now when everything feels like it's on pause. But for the future, I'm really excited to go and meet like my chosen family out in Malaysia and my chosen family out all over the world. And I think, yeah, I think that's what I immediately think of for the future and just being together and occupying space. But also, yeah, I don't know. So mainstream pride has never really been my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, but in Leeds we had a really beautiful alternative pride startup with a few, it was the Leeds Queer Film Festival and Love Muscle um, and a few other really great organisations um, and that felt really important. It felt really important to have kind of organisations and causes like Trans Leeds and Binary Leeds right at the forefront. Um, for me, uh, my experience of Pride are kind of limited because I've never really felt included, so I've never actually gone out of my way to go to them in all honesty. Uh, so I'd like to see a future, and I think there was some momentum into changing how it was, but definitely not enough, and I'm ex I would like to see a future which is built on everything that's happened in the last few months and really takes it into consideration. The reason we have Pride is because of kind of like black, queer and trans folks like Storm, De La Vera and Mar Marsha P. Johnson. Thank you.